Indian, they are my group members, Suisin, Kantan, and Hien. So without any delay, I'll proceed to introduction. So basically, these are the tasks they will perform throughout the whole semester. The first chapter is introduction, followed by literature review, flow chain and process synthesis, energy and mass balance, as well as s one simulation. The chapter five is material selection, design condition, type sizing and type rating, followed by process economy and cost estimation. And then chapter seven is sustainability, followed by safety and loss prevention. And the last task is conclusion and recommendation. So I would like to start our presentation from literature review. So basically, what is benzene? Uh, benzene is a chemical compound with molecular formula c 6 h 6 It is an organic singer aromatic compound, as you can see from this figure. It is thermally stable and chemically reactive. And actually, there are a few commercial processes that are available for benzene production. There are toluene hydrodeoxidation, toluene disproportionation, catalytic reforming, and the last one is steam cracking. So in terms of complexity and the number of variable side products that will be produced from the reaction, catalytic reforming and steam cracking process will be preferred over toluene hydrodeoxidation and toluene disproportionation. Because in toluene hydrodeoxidation, only benzene and methane gas could be produced. And then in toluene disproportionation, only benzene, xylene and toluene could be produced. Not like the case in catalytic reforming and steam cracking process, whereby a lot of uh, side products could be produced such as hydrogen gas, methane gas, propylene, ethylene, uh, butadiene, and also xylene, toluene, and benzene. And then for catalytic reforming and steam cracking process, basically these two processes are quite similar. The fit is nafta. And then uh, steam cracking process is still favorable over catalytic reforming because um, because uh, the temperature and the pressure used for the reactor is lower as compared to catalytic reforming. So that it is still favorable over the catalytic reforming. And then this is the process flow diagram for toluene hydrodeoxidation. And this is the process flow diagram for toluene disproportionation. And this is the process flow diagram for catalytic reforming nafta. And this is the process flow diagram for steam cracking of nafta. And then once we have selected a desired process from the literature review, some modification could be done on the process that we've chosen based on the hierarchical approach stated in Douglas. So firstly, um, there are five levels that have been stated in Douglas method. So the level one will be the process mode of operation. So in benzene production, continuous process is preferred over the batch mode of operating process because benzene is not a seasonal product and large quantity is always produced. It is about 200 kiloton per year and the, ben the demand for benzene is also high because it always used as a precursor for many other chemical compounds. And then in the level two, which is the input and output structure of floor sheet, um, be before we can come up with this floor sheet, um, there are five decisions that we have to consider. So the first one is, is the purification of the feed required? The second one is, is the reversible product being produced? And then the third one is, uh, is there any recycle and first stream required? And then the first one one will be the, uh, the necessarily to recycle the unreacted reactant. And then the fifth one will be how many product stream will there be? So after we consider all these decisions, we come up with this input and output structure. So next, I would like to pass to my group member. She will proceed to level three. Um, actually, for the hydrolysis gasoline hydrogen process, there are two reactors are required. Um, in the reactor one, olefin, that olefin is converted to the olefin uh, at the low temperature because uh, when that olefin is flow to the high temperature, it will cause the deposition of uh, the deposition of cork on the surface of catalyst. Um, in the reactor two, the olefin is converted to the paraffins at the high temperature uh, to increase the rate of reaction. So basically, the hydrogen gas is heated in excess for uh, to ensure the that olefin and olefin to achieve the one hundred percent conversion. So the from the reactor once the excess hydrogen 
system for a reactor effluent which exists in vapor phase. We are going straight away into the process that we are dealing with, which is only vapor phase is present. So normally there are there are many types of condition that can have that can exist, which is liquid vapor and also two phases. So but anyway, in this system, uh, the reactors the vapor has to be cooled down to 38 degrees Celsius, which is a general rule below 38 degrees Celsius in order to allow phase split or total condensation. So high pressure would be another option if phase split cannot be achieved. If if this option also cannot be uh, this option cannot be applied, it won't achieve total condensation. High pressure and refrigerated partial condenser should be used. Anyway, this is just a general one. Now we are going into more uh, into more detail into our process. <coughs> so here you can see the hydrogen gas removal by using partial condenser. So in this case, uh, the boiling point of hydrogen and hydrogen sulfide is very low, which is <coughs> below zero degrees Celsius at negative two five two degrees Celsius and negative fifty nine point seven degrees Celsius. So hydrogen is removed at, at first through the through the drum. Hydrogen and hydrogen is removed through the drum. After that, it's further removed through the partial partial condenser. Why do we use a partial condenser? Is because, like I said just now, the temperature is low, so the other other components they will become liquid, and only hydrogen will remain in get vapor form, so it can be removed in this way. Okay, so next is the removal of C5 cut followed by C9 to C12 cut. Anyway, this is uh, there are two ways of of putting this these two, I mean these two DC together because it can be the optimizer followed by dependinizer or dependinizer followed by the optimizer. So uh, it would be more economical to remove unnecessary components at first at the beginning so that we can reduce the amount of fluid that it, that the reactors after this all the components after these two they will re they will reduce the fluid that they have to deal with. So after that uh, it can reduce the cost and also it can increase efficiency. So equipment will not have to deal with high flow rate and also, like I said just now, uh, lightness of heaviest component shall be removed first. So that this is a direct sequencing of, of DC, where bottom product is, bottom product is, directed, uh, is transferred to the next DC for further processing. The next thing is removal of corrosive hydrogen sulfide and CE cut. Okay, so in the general rule, uh, if there's any corrosive components, it has to be removed as soon as possible. So in the reactor two, uh, hydrogen is used to remove hydrogen, is used to remove the theophenic sulfur that is, that, that is in the pine gas. So hydrogen will remove sulfur from, from it and it will form hydrogen sulfide. So some, in this case, some of the hydrogen and hydrogen sulfide, <coughs> after, like I said just now, after passing through the condenser, it will be, become a it will become vapor. So, but anyway, some of the hydrogen and hydrogen sulfide will will be dissolved in the mixture. So, it's further removed from from the deactinizer, where the same concept applies. We use a partial condenser after that. The okay, next thing is the extractive distillation process to separate non aromatics from aromatics. So if the volatility is less than 1.1, the LLE and also extractive distillation is usually used because of the it's affected by the boiling point. Yeah, it's affected by the boiling point also because the boiling point is very close, so we have to use LLE. And solvent is required in this case because so that we can ease the separation between aromatic and non-aromatic compound. So sulfonine is highly selective. In this case, uh, at first we decided to use sulfonine or DMSO because it's highly selective towards aromatic compounds. So that's how we, a separation can take place. And so what solvent, after that it has to be recovered because it's expensive. That's one, that's one factor and also for disposal process it's also costly. So that's why we 
choose to recycle it. Okay, lastly is the separation between taurine and, and benzene, which is the desired product that we want. So benzene has a has a boiling point of 18 degrees Celsius and taurine has a boiling point of 110 degrees Celsius. So based on the heuristic law, uh, heuristic rule, the cheapest and most simple distillation should be done last. So that, that is why we came up here. We put this at, at last when we want to recover our desired product. And after that, this is the heat exchanger network synthesis. So here you can see, for example, uh, okay, so the black dots, those are the additional heat exchanger that we put in. And there is no way, uh, there is no exact way to uh, to really say, oh, this is the correct way to do heat to do the heat exchanger network because it's determined by three factors. First is DT mean, which is the minimum allowable temperature difference. It determines the pinch point. So here we have our pinch point is 89.9 degrees Celsius to 104.9 degrees Celsius. So secondly is the first law of thermodynamics. It allows us to calculate the enthalpy change, which is the, the formula we use here is Q equals to CP delta T. And next thing is the second law of thermodynamics. Thermodynamics where it determines the direction of the heat flow, which is from heat energies can only be transferred from hot to cold stream. So based on these three rules, we get this, this diagram. And it's limited, the transfer is limited based on the temperature difference, like I see this now. And condenser to heat. OK, next thing. This is how we develop a PFD for when we apply heat exchanger network, the, or pinch technology. So here, as you can see from screen 39, it's a hot screen. So we make use of a heat exchanger. And stream 14 is a cold stream, so the, hot, the heat energy from stream 39, when it comes into contact with stream 14, heat energy will be transferred. So the hot stream will be cooled down and the cool, cold stream will be heated up. So in some cases, if the heat, heat energy transfer is enough to cater to the need of the, of the cold stream, then we can eliminate the heater, let's say we can eliminate E103, we just use a heat exchanger there. That's how we can save money from pinch technology. Okay, next up, So in order to determine the feasibility of the process, we perform simulation in Aspen High Seas. So basically the whole process is quite similar to what is stated in Douglas, just that we encounter a problem at this this distillation column, this is where the non-aromatic compound could be separated from the aromatic component. But um, for our benzene production, actually the most suitable solvent used could be, uh, they could be used in separating these two components is NMF, which is n morpholine but I couldn't find this uh, component in high seas, so I tried to use another solvent, which is uh, sulfurlane, but when I add in the sulfurlane here, the separation is very bad, or maybe uh, even worse if I didn't include the solvent. So, um, and then the component, the non aromatic component present in, the, in this process is also quite low. So, um, in order to achieve high purity, uh, I use conventional distillation column in order to separate uh, some of the non aromatic, such as C5 cut, from the aromatic component. And then the rest of the process, actually, we just follow the uh, guidelines stated in Douglas. Just that we have a problem here. So we didn't use solvent to separate aromatic compound from non-aromatic And then this is our process flow diagram. And my friend will be proceeding to mass calculation and she will explain the process flow diagram. So this is a reaction that occurs simultaneously in the reactor ones with the conversion of one to one. In the many preparation for mass balance, the basic of pyrosis gasoline and the hydrogen gas is set as 100 kg per hour and the first round and the first round uh, we assume 100% of hydrogen is recycled back to the reactor two. For the D have uh, antonizer, we assume 99% uh, of the C5 cut is removed and in the Optimizer, 99% of the C, 99% of the CA card is uh, separated from the heavier product. Um, so this 
is the reaction that occurs in the reactor two uh, with the same conversion. Um, same as the previous stress drum, the 100% of the hydrogen gas is recycled back to the reactor one. And for the we have the uh, sorry, for, and for the dehydronizer, C five C seven is uh, separated from the C eight part. And in the distillation column, the non 99% of the non aromatic hydrocarbon is separated from the uh, aromatic uh, aromatic hydrocarbons. And lastly, for the benzene power, uh, uh, 99% of benzene is separated from the polymers. So this is the comparison for mass balance between the benzene calculations and Aspen high system. As we can see, the error of uh, the error between the calculator value and the simulator value is um, quite low, except for the E one zero seven, which uh, which is located in here. This is because in the manual calculation, we assume one hundred percent of uh, we assume only hydrogen gas is recycled back to the reactor two, but in high seas there are also have some uh, benzene products and benzene is recycled back. So this is the reason why the value is quite For the energy values, we use the, uh, this equation. This is for the liquid. Uh, the equation 1.1 is used for most of the material component found. The 1.2 is used for certain materials which are the heptane, hydrogen, and hydrogen sulfide, this is for the liquid and this part is for the gas phase. Uh, this ABCD values were obtained from the Paris Chemical Engineering Group. And then we use Hexel to come up with the energy balance for major equipment. And this is a comparison with the manual calculation and simulator values. This is uh, after uh, uh, this is based on the manual calculation. We total up the heat flow through the manual calculation alone. So we need about 10,497 kilowatts of energy based on manual calculation. And then I'll proceed to material selection. So according to this, um, because we have the hydrogen sulfide as side product from the reaction, so that um, we have to consider the effect of the hydrogen sulfide because the presence of hydrogen sulfide will result in a condition which is called sulfide stress cracking. This is a condition where the hand plus ion dissociated from the hydrogen sulfide will be penetrating to the material of equipment or piping so that uh, the brittleness of the material will be increased. So that uh, in order to prevent this or in order to take into consideration the effect of the hydrogen sulfide, uh, the partial pressure of the hydrogen sulfide present in every stream uh, has been calculated in order to determine uh, the requirement in using special material to be used. So, um, according to the standards, if the partial pressure of hydrogen sulfide is less than 0 0.3 kPa, carbon steel could be used. And if it is more than 0 0.3 kPa, the effect of the test to less has to be taken into consideration so that the black standard still has to be used. This is the material that to withstand uh, partial pressure of hydrogen sulfide up to 20 kilopascal. So my friend will be proceeding to design condition. So the design condition was carried out for the major equipment. But uh, what, what we did was, let's say the pressure in high, from high seas, we took the value, let's say the big speed reactor is operating at 4000 kilopascal. From there, to set the maximum operating pressure, we plus 20% from it. And then another 10% on top of it to get the design pressure. So it's very simple, and then we stand from that. So this is our final table that we come up with for the maximum operating pressure. As for the piping, we use the ASCII D16.5 code to get the, let's say, it based on class actually. So, like this is for the carbon stick, this is for the two flat stick. And then this is the final design temperature and pressure for each three, each, uh, each pipe numbers. Um, this 
the step we is the step we use to calculate the pipe sensing. First we calculate the area by using the this by using this formula. Um, the V we use uh, the velocity we use the maximum allowable velocity according to the API with uh, 14 key standards. And after that we calculate the diameter of the pipe and select the available pipe sensing based on the ASCII standard. Uh, then we recalculate the fluid its velocity by using the new diameter uh, to ensure that the velocity is uh, below the maximum allowable uh, velocity. Okay, uh, for the cost estimation, the top, uh, first we calculate the total purchase cost of equipment. Uh, before that, we have to size each of, uh, each of the equipment. Uh, for heat exchanger, we we can get the heat transfer area from the high seas and we know the operating pressure and the materials and, uh, and the type of material. So from uh, from the chart of the heat exchanger cost for different cost estimation uh, for different transfer uh, heat transfer area, we can get the base cost of the heat exchanger and uh, calculate the purchase cost of heat exchanger by multiply the base cost of heat exchanger. With, uh, type, uh, with the material factor and also pressure factor. Uh, the similar method uh, is used to calculate the cost, uh, the purchase cost of the and the se uh, separator and the distillation cost.